Exams in medical school are a whole new ball game. Uh, what a lot of students and teachers and professors often say is that you're drinking out of the fire hose. You're being given so much information in such a short amount of time that it makes it nearly impossible to be able to learn all of that information in the small amount of time that you're given. What I found is that the information actually isn't that difficult, it's just the sheer quantity, the vast amount of information that you're given in, to know in a short amount of time that makes it so hard to remember it. So with all this information, I needed a way to most efficiently study with the limited time I had for my big exams. I needed a way to use my time the most effectively. My first exam in medical school, I reread all the PowerPoint slides, and then I summarized all my notes, and then I would summarize what I summarized. So eventually I had notes, on notes, on notes. Uh, this took a long time, and I should have realized it early on that it took way too long. Luckily, I met a friend in the first couple of weeks, let's call him uh, Jeff. My name is Jeff. And Jeff didn't look at PowerPoint slides. Jeff didn't write summaries. Jeff used a method which I will call the Rongi method. After implementing the Rongi method, I saw my scores jump up along with my stress and study time go way down. In this video, I will lay out the Rongi method and why I feel it's so powerful. I will also, as an example, give my study schedule from nine days out from an exam and describe how I maximize my returns from practice tests because practice tests are one of your best resources for preparing for an exam. I wish someone told me about this before I started undergrad eight years ago or even before my first exam in medical school. So hopefully this will help someone who maybe isn't as pleased with their study techniques or exam scores and will help them do better because it's helped me do a lot better. So what is this Rongi method? Well, what it is, nine days before my exam, I go through everything and write down in red everything that I'm confused on or unsure about on my fancy schmancy iPad over here. I skim PowerPoints, my notes, and review guides that other students have sent me, very nicely so. Uh, and every time I see a topic that I'm confused on or couldn't explain to a five-year-old that's explaining it in a very simple sense, I write that topic down and I write it down in red. It is important to note that I don't look over a single PowerPoint or a single chapter for more than five minutes. So for example, if I'm given a lecture on heart sounds and what each heart sound means, like S1, S2, murmurs, I won't just write down in red heart sounds just because that is nowhere near specific enough because I won't know what to study or what to learn about. Because maybe I understand S1, but I don't understand S2. Maybe I don't know what S3 and S4 is. So for example, this still kind of messes me up. S3 and S4 kind of get jumbled in my head all the time and whether they're with a dilated cardiomyopathy or a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So I would write down, what is the difference between S3 and S4 heart sounds? And what do they correlate to dilated, dilated cardiomyopathy or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or which one? Um, and that's the way you kind of specify your wrongy. And now I do this wrongy method before my main exam studying starts. So now I have a big list of the red things of what I need to understand. This is a big list and it is Scary, but it is so important. Usually by the time I'm done going through everything I need to know for an exam, I'll have maybe 40 to 50 topics in red that I need to understand. Um, but these are the topics that I'm weak on. And this is why the Rongi method is so powerful. Oftentimes throughout a course, there are things that I understand straight away. I really don't need to review those things that I understand probably actually reviewing those things is a waste of time. Instead, I skip over those things and I focus on the things that I'm unsure on, focusing on the major gaps in my knowledge. This is really tailoring your studying to you, which you should always be doing. Also understanding Trump's memorization always. Uh, if you understand something, you will remember it longer and can answer a more diverse range of questions about that topic than if you just memorized it. What am I gonna do with this big red list of things, of topics? Over the course of the nine days before my exam, I'm gonna teach my myself those topics and then test myself on those topics every single day. My exam review layout is something like this. Before I get into that, a quick side note, I also do my Anki cards every day and I lay out the importance of doing this in my space repetition video, but throughout the semester or a block of content, I'm learning new pieces of material every day and I'm doing flashcards based on that material every day to make sure that I'm retaining that material over time so I don't have to kind of cram near the end. Also, if I don't study that piece of information kind of quickly after I learn it, I'll fall off the forgetting curve, which is kind of this idea that if the first time you learn something, you're gonna forget most of that information very quickly unless you retest and restudy that information. So I start my study schedule nine days before my exam. I will show you my plan for each day using the Rongi method uh, until the exam. My method is overall broken down into skim the topic, learn your Rongis, 
and then do practice testing. So again, let's skim the topic, learn the wrongies, practice testing. On study day one out of nine, I'll skim half the topics that I need to know for my entire exam and write them out in red on my iPad. Again, I'm writing out my wrongies, which are the ones that I think I don't understand or I'm not unsure of, of that first half of content. One important thing to make sure is that you're, you're skimming this content. Make sure you're skimming it because otherwise you'll take way too long to read over it. This first part, the skim part, doesn't take too long, maybe three hours per day. So I make sure I skim each thing very quickly. Uh, I'm not trying to relearn it. I'm just trying to skim everything to find the topics that aren't really sitting well with me that I couldn't explain to a five-year-old. The Feynman technique. Um, so I try to be specific with this list and not too broad. So if I was trying to understand the heart, instead of just writing understand the heart, which is an entire block of material, I might realize that I don't really understand aortic regurgitation. So one item on my list would be aortic regurgitation. And that's an easy, actionable piece of information that I can study specifically and learn it. Day one out of nine, I've gone through half of all the content that I need to know. Day two out of nine, I've gone through all the content that I need to know. And I haven't gone through it again in learning it. I've gone through it in writing down topics that don't make sense to me, that I don't understand. So I'll have a big list, usually of about 40 to 50 topics that I need to review in depth. On day three out of nine, this is where the work begins. I have my big red list of every topic I am unsure on. So let's say I have 20 items, it's usually 40 to 50, but let's say I have 20 items. I'll divide that by four because on day three, day four, day five, and day six out of nine, I wanna be studying those topics. So on day one, I'll, or sorry, day three, I'll be studying five out of 20. On day four, I'll do 10 out of 20. On day five, I'll do 15 out of 20. And on day six, I'll do 20 out of 20. So when day six comes around, I've covered all the content that I'm unsure on. So I will look at my first item, which let's go back to aortic regurgitation. I'll say, hmm, I don't understand that. I need to look up in the notes what that actually means, Google it a little bit. And then I make sure I can explain that topic to someone as if they didn't know much about that topic. So a layman or, or someone who's not in medicine. And I find that by doing this, you're teaching yourself to actually understand it more. So you're teaching yourself the way it should sound in your own brain because if you want to teach something you want to understand it to yourself so if you're teaching something you definitely know it a decent amount better than you do from just memorizing it so then i repeat this learning and pretending i'm explaining it to a friend topic for the next four topics on that day then i go over all my wrongies again so i'll just see the prompt and the prompt will just say what is aortic regurgitation? Then I'll try and explain that with no notes, no PowerPoint slides, no nothing. And I'll do that for the second topic, the third topic, the fourth topic, and the fifth topic. And this may take a while, but this is the point, this is the weakness in whatever you're studying. These are the points that you're gonna see the biggest increase in your scores and exam scores, because these are the places that you've identified that you are weakest on that you don't understand. Which is why it's so important when you're studying to make a study method or strategy that works for you. This entire wrongy method might not work for you, you might hate it. And the important thing is that if you don't like something and if it's not working and you can measure that it's not working, stop it, change it, do something different. Um, I know for me, I really like Anki, I really like practice testing, but things like highlighting, summarizing, rereading just didn't work for me. And also that's supported by the evidence, but it just personally just didn't work for me. So I had to find methods that I liked and I wanted to do. So back to day three out of nine. So I've done my Anki cards, I've done all my wrongies, and now I'm done for the day, which is nice. But usually, again, it takes a decent amount of time. So on day four out of nine. So again, I'll wake up, smash that space bar, destroying all the Anki cards ASAP. And then I'll take a little break and then look at my list of red unknown wrongies. First, I look at the questions that I covered the day before, so topics one through five, and retest myself to make sure I remembered what I learned the, the other day. And this is kind of your own form of spaced repetition, your own form of active recall without the actual flashcards. So next, I go into my new wrongies, so topics six through 10. Those are the next five topics that I really don't understand, and I learn them and then test myself, and that's day four done. And then you do five, you do the same thing, so 10 topics 10 to 15, and day six, you do the same thing, topics 15 to 20. And then you're done all your content. 
you're done all the content you need to understand from your Rongi method. And again, you might have 10 topics a day or 15 topics a day. It really depends what you write down. The value you get out of this is just from what you put into it. If you're not understanding those topics, if you're just writing an answer you memorize, that's kind of the result that you're gonna get on a test. You're not gonna be able to work with the information in your head, which you wanna be able to do because that's where the real benefit comes. So on the last two days, day seven out of nine and day eight out of nine, day nine out of nine being the exam, I have the full day to do practice testing because I've done all the content review I need to do on days three, four, five, and six. I've covered all the content. So on days seven and eight, I just have practice testing, just practice testing. So what do these practice tests comprise? Well, usually they're the best questions I can find and I take them in the most exam-like setting I can. I wanted to try and be similar to what I'll actually experience on test day. So what are the questions that the professors will give? What were the questions on the last exam like? Will it be multiple choice? Will it be write, writing and essays? Can I create questions and think like the professors and the test makers might think? This is the hardest way, but one of the best ways to test your knowledge, because if you can come up with a question and you see it on the exam, which I think has happened to me twice, you're just gonna be, you're just gonna be amazed. So the tests I take for my school are three hours and 120 questions. So what I try to do is come and bring together 120 questions that I can take over three hours. And that's what I'll do for those two days. So day seven out of nine, I'll sit down in the morning after I've done my Anki cards and take an 120 question test over three hours. And then I'll take a break and then I'll review those cards and that'll be my entire day. And then the next day I'll set myself up another 120 question question test. Again, no phone, no notes, exam-like settings, and then I'll review those questions for the end of the day. Importantly, when I'm reviewing those questions, I review them with purpose. I like to mark every question I was unsure on, even if I got it right in the end. That way, when I'm going back and reviewing, I know which topic that I'm still a little unsure on, even if I got it wrong or right. I know that even if I got in a question right, but I marked it unsure, I need to review that topic. I try to understand the reason why I got that question wrong or why I marked it unsure. Was it a lack of basic understanding? Was it some nitpicky, annoying thing that I had to memorize? Was it material that I actually don't understand? And why am I getting that question wrong? Why are the other answer choices wrong? Can I explain the other answer choices? Can I come up with a question where the other answer choices would be right? This takes a lot more time, but it really pays off big in the end. Okay, so that was the general study strategy. And no joke, I've seen like a one to two letter grade jump from just doing this. It seems to really work for me. Also, I'm a planner. I like to plan out everything, like everything I do. Like I plan out my food, like what I'm gonna eat on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and what I'm gonna eat for lunch. It's a whole nother thing, but we're gonna, we're gonna cut that out. I also have a Google Doc that I've put in the description down below that is a template for this Rongi method that you guys can download for free. If you are studying by rereading, highlighting, or resummarizing, I really urge you to try this Rongi method, maybe just for one exam, and see what kind of change it has on your exam score. Some final short tips for exam taking, uh, get a good night's sleep every night you are studying, not just the night before your exam. People always say this, but it's so true. Uh, when you don't sleep, your test taking skills decrease. Your memory consolidation from the day before is way worse. Um, and you just feel worse and you feel junky. Also treat it like a game. It's not some awful test that will determine the rest of your life. It's a game that you can and will beat. Tough question, bam. I predicted that question. Finally, don't forget to take care of yourself too. Take exercise breaks, um, use the Pomodoro method to take breaks while studying, do whatever you like. I do yoga, lift weights, play soccer. Um, I don't wanna skip those no matter what. Even if I feel like I'm really overwhelmed with information, I find that if I don't go work out or if I don't go exercise, that I am way less effective when it comes to studying. And when I do take an hour or two to go play soccer or do something fun, I come back re-energized and my studying is just way better. I never sacrifice my sleep or exercising for studying. I just never do it. I also make sure I eat. So that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.